right now. Okay. So we're holding at the bottom of Tzadik Vav Amir Aleph. Boi Rabbi Yechidon. Yisoyimim Oimrim Nas Nanu V'yameis Lanatavti. The Yisoyimim say, we already gave you your Mizonos for the entire year. And she says, I didn't get anything. I didn't get them yet. So I'll uh, be right. We know the din is the Motsi has to bring the Raya. The Shaila is, is the woman the Motsi or is, are the Yisoyimim the Motsiim? Explains the Gemara. Once the husband dies, the husband is obligated to give the nechassim, is obligated to give mezainus to the woman, and the yarshim get the nechassim. The shaila is when we say that the yarshim pay for the mezainus of the woman, is the pshat that really she has a lien on everything, everything's in her possession to pay for her mezaynas. And then when she's finished with that process, the the Yisayimim get everything that's left. Or do you say, no, right away upon death of the husband, his property transfers to Yisayimim. The orphans all inherit everything. And now they have an independent obligation to pay for the mezaynas of the of the wife. Says the Gemara, Toshma. The Tony Levi Almada calls Manchel and he says, Ali is Simon Lavi Raya. And he says, Allah Lavi Raya. So, what does Levi say? Levi clearly indicates that as long as she is not married, the Nechassim are in her Chazaka to pay for her Mizraites. Once she gets married, then they automatically go to the Yisoyimim's Chazaka. And now the Yisoyimim are holding on to them. And if she wants to collect, Money for previous mezainas, she has to bring a raya in order to collect the mezainas that she, the money for the mezainas that she was rightfully due before she got married. What's that machlekes? Mecheres ukoiseves. The woman has the nechassim. Now she needs in order to sell them to pay for her mezaynas. So she can sell them, however, or she has to sell the nechassim of her late husband in order to pay for her ksuba. She's allowed to, however, provided that she writes in the shtar to the lakuchas that she's selling it in order to get mezaynas. I'm selling this field in order to buy mezaynas. I'm selling this field in order to buy to pay for my ksuba. It has to be written and specified in the star. Why? The kuchas are going to come and say, Lady, we already paid for your ksuba. She'll say, No, you didn't. You paid for my mezainas. I have a star. And that star will be a raya that she didn't get her ksuba yet. That is, that is a Yehuda. She does not indicate it in the sale in the star either way. She doesn't say I'm selling this for Mizraelis or I'm selling this for Suba. And that will make her power greater. What does that mean? We know that Suba she's allowed to collect from Mishubadim. Mizraelis is only from Bene Khairi. So if she sold it for Mizraelis, if she sold the field for Mizraelis, and now she goes to collect the Ksuba from the Bnei Chaim, there's nothing left. So she can now be goive nechasim mishubadim for her Ksuba. And if she sold it for her, that makes her power stronger in order to collect the Ksuba afilu mi mishubadim. You know, similarly, if she says, sells it for her ksuba, and they say, well, we already gave you the field for the mezainas, she goes, no, I didn't. I go sold it for my ksuba. Now you owe me mezainas. Now you owe me mezainas. Have a right. So Yeshi says that makes her power greater. Says the Gemara, my lab, 
Rabbi Yehuda, the Amar Bay Lefrushe, according to Rabbi Yehuda, says that she has to explain what she's telling you. He says that a chazer because he has to explain to me about the money of the raya and the star is going to be the raya, and therefore she has to write in the star if she's telling you from the zayin of the tuba. Rabbi Yehuda says, "Loy Bay Lefrushe, why?" Because she has ownership rights to the nechazim called man. She hasn't got her two bedim zaynis yet. Well, and therefore, if the Yisraelim now say, we paid you Mzaynis, hooray, you sold the field to get your Mzaynis, so they have They have to bring a raya to show that it, the field is taka sold from Mzaynis. It wasn't sold for the Ksuba. That is the Machlegis Tanayim, which we've seen right by. The Gemara then rejects this. Mimai. It's not true. Maybe the Machlekes we show you, the Machlekes Tanayim is really... Not a machlekes is about who the nechaz the cheskes who the nechazim are. Why? Everyone agrees that the woman has the rights to the nechazim immediately upon death to pay for her mezuzahs and pay for her ksuba. Well, the same Rabbi Raya, the Rabbi Yehuda, I Rabbi Yehuda says she has to specify. It's a toive kamash malan. He's coming to say good advice. I'm going to say good advice. What's the good advice? The liquid, the low likula rava sanusa. In order that she won't be called a ravenous, a hungry lady, in other words, if she sold all the property in order to get her ksuba. And now she's still a mezainus. She's still a mezainus. She goes back to these and says, hello, you owe me money from his And they say, what do you mean we owe me Mizayin? You're saying? The only reason you owe money from his is because you sold all the property and it wasn't enough to feed you. So you're looking for more. You're always looking for more. Whereas if she specifies what she's selling it for, then guess what? No one can claim any illicit deals going on here. No one can say she did something illegitimate. She says, I legitimately sold this for the Mizanis, and now I'm asking for another field to sell or another field to pay for the Ksuba. The Eloite Mahachi, because if it's not an eight to take a for you, who does it not just coming to say good advice? Ha the boy Rabbi Yechenon, this question of Rabbi Yechenon, this question of Rabbi Yechenon, Tivshait Lei Mimas Nisan. We should answer it from the Mishnah on. Sadik Zayin Amad Beis. Mishnah Sadik Zayin Amad Beis should be a valid answer to our question. Why? Because the Mishnah says, "My Cheres Lemezaynis Shaloi BeBeisdin." She's allowed to sell the field if she's not even without Beisdin's approval to pay for her Mezaynis. Ukoi Sevis Elu Mezaynis Mecharti. She writes specifically for Mezaynis. She writes specifically for Mezaynis. A very, very gishmak. It's beautiful. It could be Huda. Right? So if, why would you have to say it for Mizanis? She has to say it for Mizanis because she needs a raya against the assignment. Now it answer of Yechelen's kasha. Alternatively, it could be that she has to write it for Mizanis simply just as an etiquette of Mashmah. So if you're telling me that Rabbi Yehuda is not an etiquette but he's saying me Iker Hadin, Nechasim, or Becheskus Yas Mikaimel, you have a very clear indication of the mission saying Zayin and Beis what the halach will be in Rabbi Yechanan's Shaila. So therefore, Al Karchichitz must be Elamas Nisan Lekel the mission will be not the Eitzah Tayvik Mashmalon. Achadam Eitzah Tayvik Mashmalon. So Rabbi Yehuda is only that it's an Eitzah Tayva to indicate clearly indicate if you're selling it for Mizaynus or for Ksuba. But Meikar Adin Meikar Adin. The almana does not need a raya because alma, because we hold nechazim cheskas almana kaima al yusim lo biraya. Inami, or you could say another rejection of the tanoi that that machlekes tanoi is not about necheskas becheskas yusim kaima nechazim becheskas rather, everyone agrees the same of the Nechazim. I, what are you going to do with the Yaisi Shita? What are you going to do with um, the Yaisi Shita? The Yaisi seems to say that the woman doesn't have to specify what she's selling it for because that makes her, her power of collection greater. 
אמר רבי קשישו, מושל דה רבי יצל למד רבי דיימה. דה רבי הוד, אני חושב, דה רבי יצל הוד לגבי רבי קשישו. רבי קשישו כדי פעולים מושל תקספיין רבי יצל. שכמרה, הפרסון זונת דפת. שאומר, תנו מסיים זוז לפלוני בעל חויבי. Give 200 zoos to play me my, the person, my debtor, that I owe money to. Rotsu v'chayvi neitlin, rotsu v'matona neitlin. You can take it either way, matona or as a, to pay off the debt that I owe him. Yim v'matona neitlin, loikach yofe koichai. Makes his power, his power much greater. In other words, if the shchimei, I gave a present of 200, If the uh, 200 zuz to the Baal Chayv, the Baal Chayv can still can go collect the, the, the debt owed him. He can still go collect the Chayv. So Karchach, it makes it, and not only can he collect the Chayv, he can collect the Chayv, I feel him, Mishubadim. Whereas if it would just be a matana, that the Shechemira is saying, this is going to pay off the Chayv, and I still owe my the Baal Chayv 200 matana, So that matana will only be from Bnei Chayim. So the way to make it a stronger, uh, not a strong, to make it a stronger nesina, a stronger giving of the 200 zuz to the Baal Chayim is to indicate they're being given for a matana. So she, the Shechemira says it can go either way, but it's clear what it's really for. So to be Rabbi Yaisi saying that you don't have to write anything in the shtar to the lukuchais. Because when the woman sold the field, obviously she still wants the capability to collect from Mishu body. So she was only selling it for Mizoinus. It's obvious, it's clear, and therefore it does not have to be written down. Ask the Gemara a new question. How does she sell it? In other words, She's holding on to her husband's possessions, and now she's going to sell it in order to get her mezuzahs. Kids my cheres. I'm going to Rabbi Dani. I'm going to Rav Katina. I'm going to Rav. My cheres. Achas the shneim asar chodesh. She sells one field for twelve months. Now she sells it for the value that it will cost to pay for mezuzahs for the entire twelve months. But she get and she gets the money every 30 days. She gets the money to pay off that uh, month, that month. In other words, they don't give it her, the buyer doesn't give it to her in one lump sum all 12 months. Rather, every 30 days, they're going to pay her a little bit more for that 30 days. But she's allowed to sell enough fields to pay for Mazayim for an entire year. If you do him, may cheres the shishi chadash with a gech mavain is achas hashayish in yoyim. And he says, no, don't sell so much. Only sell enough fields to pay mizayim for six months, six months at a time. Tanik was it the Rabbi Huda? May cheres the shem tochayt with a gech mavain is achas hashayish in yoyim. Tanik was it the Rabbi Huda? May cheres the shishi chadash with a gech mavain is achas hashayish in yoyim. So the price is beginning to waste. So I'm Rabbi Amei Mar Hilchesa Mecheres L'shishu Shachadu V'Gech Mefanes Achz L'shay Shemiyayim. Halacha is she sells it for six months, not for a year, only six months. Enough fields to pay for her mezuzahs for six months. However, she's only going to get the money every thirty days. I'm going to Rabbi Shul Amei Mar. The Rabbi Yudah Mai. What are you going to do, Rabbi Yudah Shita? You paske not like Rabbi Yudah, not like Rabbi Huna. Why not? What about Rabbi Yudah Shita? Says the Gemara, Amar lei l'shmi ali. I never heard of such a shita. Kiloi mar lei spirali. I mean, I don't hold to such a shita. It's not that I never heard of it. I never heard it, meaning I never understood such a shita. Therefore, I never held of such a shita that it has to, that you're able to sell the woman's able to sell for twelve months at a time. Bo minei. We have a few more minutes, so I'd like to go a little bit further. Once she sold the field to pay her mezaynas. So let's say she sold the field to pay for her mezaynas. Now comes the time to collect the ksuba. Can she go collect? We know the ksuba, you're allowed to collect from Mishubadim, just like you're allowed to collect from not only Bnei Chayim, but even Mishubadim. 
So she goes to collect the ksuba, and the Yisraelim say, we only have to pay half the ksuba, go collect from the Mishubadim. Can she go collect that exact field that she sold? It's a kasha according to Rav Yosef. Dom Rav Yosef, I'm a loss of the Zabin, a chrayis a yasin. Because the Rav Yosef holds that a Almana who sold the field, if the field gets taken away from the Lukuchais, the Yisoyim have to reimburse the Lukuchais. So if this woman will go take a field away from the Lukuchais, then the Yisoyim would then pay the Lukuchais. So she's now getting her loan from the Yisoyim. Ubeidina does Amin Achayis Yasmi. So what do we say? Ma'akim Achayis Yasmi Torfa. Since at the end of the day, the responsibility to repay the buyer is on the assignment, let her go collect. It's as if she's collecting from the assignment. They could say to her, the assignment could say to the lady, I understand that in general, you didn't take upon yourself. In other words, if some ran the balchov of your ex-husband who's dead, if his Baal will come and collect the field, you didn't take that responsibility to reimburse the buyers. However, that's true for the Baal Chov the Alma. However, but your own responsibility, for you taking the field away from the Chuchos of Adzai, you have to take responsibility for it. So therefore, she would not be allowed to take it away from the Lukuchais, because it's as if, and then she's going to pay back the Lukuchais. She didn't get her loan yet. She didn't pay, she didn't get her tsuba yet. So, Mamela, she wouldn't be allowed to take this exact field. Okay. We can uh, stop here. The Gemara is going to bring another. We have, we have two more minutes. We'll, we'll finish this, uh, the next proof. The Gemara then says, the Gemara then says, Tani Sua. It's a brisa. My cheres v'lechas ad kedek tzuba. So she's allowed to sell the field for her mizoyim until there's enough left, property left to pay for tzuba. V'samach lo shetik v'tzuba s'min ha'shar. And she relies on the fact that she's going to be get the tzuba from that which is remaining, the b'nei that are remaining. So we see that she can only collect from that which is remaining, meaning she can't, if she sold it, she can't collect the field that she sold to repay her ksuba. She can, the, if, if somebody else um, took the, ksuba, the, the field or whatever, and then a khadami, she could take it away because that would be Mishubadi. But if she caused the field to be sold, she sold it herself to pay for Mizanis, then she would not allowed to be go collect that. She had to, there has to be a chayim that remains to pay for ksuba. Practical gemara v'dilma eitz of the gemara shulan the lelikri lo hadron isa. Maybe it's just teaching good advice that we don't want her to be an Indian giver. She gives and takes back. We don't want her to have a bad name in the streets. So we're saying she should make sure not to sell too much. But the maker I did if she would sell, she'd be able to take it back. Says gemara im kain listni goyve ksuba sa. It should just say that she's good from that which remains. My somachlo, she relies on that which remains. Meaning she can't collect from that which she sold. She can only collect from the b'nei cheir that remain. And if nothing remains, then she loses her capabilities to collect her ksuba. Ad kan for today.